Now, I'm not a Christian, and there's four reasons for that. But there's nothing in the teachings of Jesus I disagree with. Nothing. And one of the things that I was very, very, very interested in is over and over and over, he was very, very clear. You have to understand, many times in, in, in the New Testament, and Christians today all talk about faith. Faith faith this and faith that. And faith have, you know what? Faith ain't shit, according to Jesus. Because he specifically said, faith without works is dead. He could have easily said, the, an informed field without a follow-through is dead. But he couldn't have spoke to the people that way at that time. They did not have any frames of reference for what an informed field is. An informed field is a ghost protocol. It is a mathematical construct packed full of information of what something should be like, what something should feel like, what something should look like. That's what an informed field is. It hasn't actually happened in actuality. But there is so much belief in the generator of that informed field that that informed field will come to pass that the generator himself or herself actually starts doing physical acts as if it is already true. And because those physical actions are also the, the generation of more informed fields that reinforce the ghost protocol informed field, the simulacrum can't discern the difference. We are immortal beings suspended within an information hologram. The simulacrum responds to informed fields, does not respond to emotion, does not respond to intent, does not respond to, to wishes. It responds to what is happening inside of it. Remember, it can't read your thoughts. It can read your cortisol levels. It can read your endorphin levels. And if all of a sudden it's reading endorphin spikes, and, it, and the simulacrum, the language of the simulacrum is informed fields, not your, your vocabulary. There's nothing out of your mouth in any language in the world that can cause the simulacrum to, to do anything. Nothing. There is no emotion that you can feel that can make it do anything. But if you build a picture of your mind, because your mind is immortal, it is ancient, and it is powerful, and it is immersed and saturated, completely surrounded by the simulacrum. And if that mind is building a picture, the simulacrum can feel it. It can anticipate it. It knows something is being built. If it starts reading the endorphin levels, then it understands that, oh, well, something is happening. Something must be true because this immortal here is excited, is happy, is confident. Then the simulacrum in, interprets what you're doing physically. Whatever you're doing physically, it reads as a language. It knows what your intent is. It, it, it can make thousands, thousands of calculations, guesses, interpolations, guesstimations within a nanosecond. It's way ahead of us. But the simulacrum is not going to be a liar. If something is assumed to be true by an immortal immersed within it, and that immortal creates an informed field by basically fantasizing it into a very elaborate picture in their mind, then that immortal must follow through on that informed field and act. This is what Jesus meant. Faith without works is dead. All the faith in the world will never save you, never save your kids, and will never save anyone. You've got to follow through. And that follow through must be something in the physical world. It can't be mental because all you're doing is adding to the informed field. We live in a quantum universe and the simulacrum is based off quantum physical principles. Those quantum principles mandate for an informed field to actually produce something in the physical world. There must be what is called quantum collapse. Quantum collapse is the generation of an informed field and then a physical act that follows. The simulacrum instantly understands that there is a trajectory happening. It may not know how far or what direction you're going or what you're actually trying to accomplish, but there's a momentum, there's a trajectory, and a reality tunnel is instantly knit into existence, and you're in it. You have now 
created something. Now, it can die a minute later by doubt, by you not moving in a certain direction anymore. It can. But a reality tunnel's death is an instant. It's like, an, it's like a ghost protocol. It hangs around for a while, at least until the next time you're jacked into the simulacrum through the central nervous system and you go into REM sleep. And while you're, while you're in sleep, that's when the, the simulacrum can go in, go in your mind, and read your brain, read all, read all, all, all your, your neural pathways. It can explore and try to figure out what's going on with you and knit the necessary reality tunnels that will be existing in your life the next day. It doesn't know which ones you're going to choose. It just knows that these are your options based off your past acts.